Hi everybody! I wanted to make a video today about the crystallography of calcite and what this is going to allow us to do is use symmetry elements that we can see in a rhombohedron of calcite in order to orient it appropriately in space and this can be useful in allowing us to take advantage of certain physical properties of our calcite which vary with direction in our crystal. So let's start by looking at a calcite rhombohedron and then we can identify some symmetry elements in order to orient our crystal in space. So here we have a calcite rhombohedron. These are usually formed by the cleavage pattern of calcite. So an important thing to note is that sometimes you can end up with fairly complicated forms if you have both a growth form combined with uh, cleavage breaks in calcite but in this case, this is all the pattern of the cleavage that is producing the final form we're seeing here. So we're just spinning this shape around right now to get you an idea of what this shape looks like in three dimensions. But now that we've rotated the mineral around a bit, uh, let's stop here because this view is going to be one of the most important ones in understanding what's going on with our calcite. So, first things first, we already know this mineral is calcite. And so what we can do is go and look up the point group symmetry of calcite in order to figure out what symmetry elements we should be hunting down. The point group symmetry for calcite in Herman Mogwin notation is 3 bar 2 over m. Knowing that calcite is a member of the trigonal crystal system allows us to translate our Herman Mogwin notation into actual symmetry elements that we should look for. The three bar portion of our point group symbol is telling us that our C crystallographic axis will be a threefold roto inversion axis. The two over M portion of our point group symbol is telling us that our A axes are going to be twofold rotational axes with perpendicular mirror planes. Because we're in the trigonal crystal system, our C axis will be our unique axis and there will be a plane of three A axes perpendicular to said C crystallographic axis. So let's go hunt some symmetry. So this view of our calcite is important, and hopefully you've noticed that these three cleavage faces look very similar to one another as we're viewing the crystal in this direction. So hopefully you've gotten the sense that there's a rotational symmetry element that we're seeing here. And what this symmetry element actually turns out to be is our threefold roto inversion axis, which is our C crystallographic axis. So, how do we spot this symmetry element? Well, the first thing to notice is that the three faces on the upper part of our crystal here all appear to be related in this triangular pattern. And if I had just one of these faces, I could generate the other two by rotations of 120 degrees or 240 degrees along this axis of our crystal. So we're definitely seeing at least a threefold rotational axis in this direction through our crystal. Now let's make it a bit more complicated and talk about where the roto inversion axis comes in. So the trick here is to recognize that the faces on the underside of our calcite rhombohedron are actually also symmetrically related to the faces on the upper side that we can see. These faces underneath can be generated by inverting the faces above through the center of our crystal. So we don't have a simple threefold rotational axis. This is actually a bit more complicated, and it is a threefold roto inversion axis. Just to be a bit clearer about how this is operating, let's take a quick example here. So if I have this face, essentially what I can do is rotate that 120 degrees and then invert through the center of my calcite crystal in order to generate this face underneath represented by the white dot. Repeating this roto inversion multiple times allows you to generate all of our different rhombohedral faces, hence they are all related to one another by the same symmetry element. So hopefully I convinced you about what's going on with our threefold roto inversion axis, that is also our C crystallographic axis, but let's hunt down some other symmetry elements as well. The other symmetry elements we should be able to spot are three twofold rotational axes, which are going to be our A crystallographic axes, and perpendicular to these axes will be mirror planes. With this viewing direction down the C crystallographic axis, the mirror planes are fairly easy to spot. 
Here's one of them as illustrated by this line, and you can see on either side of the line, the crystal essentially is a mirror image of the other half. Once we spot one of these mirror planes, the other two mirror planes are fairly simple to find as well, and are located here. So after spotting these mirror planes, we know that our A crystallographic axes are going to be twofold rotational axes perpendicular to these mirror planes. We also know that these A crystallographic axes are going to lie in a plane perpendicular to our C crystallographic axis. We'll take a better view of the symmetry going on with these axes in a bit. But for now, one of these axes is located here. As you can see, it's perpendicular to that mirror plane. And then once one of these axes is found, uh, the other two become apparent as well. So it's a bit hard to see the twofold rotational symmetry element in this view. So let's change up the orientation of our crystal now by rotating 90 degrees so that we go from viewing down the C crystallographic axis to actually viewing down the plane of the A axes. So after lining up our crystal appropriately, what I want you to notice is that this view is actually looking down a twofold rotational axis. Basically, the two rhombohedral faces that you're seeing here are related to one another by a rotation of 180 degrees. So this is one of our A crystallographic axes. This also helps us figure out what's going on with our other A crystallographic axes in this view, which are located here. So I was a little off in how I was holding the crystal with respect to the plane of our A crystallographic axes. So you can see here that plane is a bit tilted in this view. It's also a bit off because although my calcite rhombohedron is pretty close to equant, it's not quite the perfect rhombohedron. And this is because one set of my uh, cleavage planes is actually a bit longer than the other two. But we know that our C crystallographic axis is perpendicular to the plane of our A axes, and so we can add it on like so. It, of course, has a bit of a tilt because the plane of the A axes has a bit of a tilt as well. Let's rotate our crystal a bit now and get an idea of what a mirror plane looks like from the perspective of viewing along the plane of the A axes. So a 30 degree rotation away from our A axis will actually take us to this mirror plane. And now we'll keep rotating our crystal in this plane and see if you can identify additional twofold rotation axes and mirror planes as we do so. Sorry also that I didn't do the best job of rotating our crystal in this particular plane, but hopefully it's close enough that you get the idea of what's going on here. Let's return to our view along the C crystallographic axis, and now let's review some of what we've seen so far. We can use our symmetry elements to orient our crystal in space, with two particularly important views being along our C crystallographic axis and along the plane of our A crystallographic axes. If we didn't know that this mineral was calcite, then we could use the crystallography that we've looked at in order to help identify this material as calcite. But since we know this material is calcite and now we've taken the time to orient it appropriately, we can actually take advantage of some physical properties of calcite that vary with direction. So what we're going to do now is take a look at how light interacts with a calcite rhombohedron that I've modified slightly. So we'll be observing our calcite rhombohedron with normal everyday light, no fancy plane polarized light for this experiment. And so I want you to notice the singular star that we have here on our piece of paper. What we're doing now is we're going to bring in our calcite rhombohedron and viewing the star in this direction through our calcite rhombohedron from rhombohedral face to rhombohedral face yields two images of our star. Now, usually if we have a calcite rhombohedron, we're stuck always viewing sort of from rhombohedral face to rhombohedral face through the calcite rhombohedron. But what I've done here is actually cut a pair of windows in our calcite rhombohedron so that we can also look down the C crystallographic axis. So let's change our viewing direction so that we're looking at the star along our C crystallographic axis. And what you should be able to notice is that that central window that I've cut, where we're looking along C, we only have one image of that star. Also, as a somewhat unintentional bonus, we can see that the images of our star through our rhombohedral faces surrounding that central window are still doubled. So this is illustrating that with respect to light, 
our calcite is actually anisotropic. It displays different behaviors in different directions. And in a later video, we'll take advantage of this anisotropy in order to build a prism that allows us to polarize light. So if you want to learn more about anisotropy and minerals, or in particular the optical properties of minerals, you should check out the Optical Mineralogy playlist, which will go through a whole variety of steps to help you understand how minerals interact with light. So, to summarize what we did today, we took a look at a calcite rhombohedron and used the symmetry present in this calcite rhombohedron to orient it crystallographically. We then examined some of the optical properties of calcite using a calcite rhombohedron with specially cut windows looking down the sea crystallographic axis. This allowed us to view an image both from rhombohedral face to rhombohedral face in our calcite rhombohedron, as well as through those windows along the sea crystallographic axis. When viewing an image from rhombohedral face to rhombohedral face through our calcite, the image is doubled, and when viewing an image along the sea crystallographic axis of our calcite, we see a single image. Calcite is anisotropic with respect to light, meaning that it displays different behaviors in different directions. And we'll take advantage of this anisotropy in a later video. So, thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something, and have a great day.